meeting of the Cumberland School Committee to order at 7.55, and I'd like to start off with an apology for being late. Uh, sorry, we had a couple of meetings that ran long. Uh, next up is Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. We were a little out of sync there. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, next up is the consent agenda. We have a few items here. Approval of minutes from regular meeting 8-9-2018, special meeting 8-14-2018, also approval of minutes from executive session 8-9-2018, and finally the student parent handbooks all schools. Pleasure of the committee. Mr. Mr. Denon, I would ask that we um, table the handbooks for this at this time and bring them back at our next meeting. We're gonna be making some changes to them. Okay, so Mr. Fiorello makes a motion to table the student parent handbooks for all schools. Second. Second by Mr. Hess. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes six nothing. So those are tabled. So the rest of the uh, consent agenda stands. Motion to approve. Mr. Fiorello makes a motion to approve. Second. Second by Mrs. Friedman. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That passes six nothing. Next up is report out of executive session meeting from tonight, 8-23-2018. No votes were taken. Uh, we need a vote to seal the minutes. Motion to... Uh, Mr. Hess and Mr. DeMonica make a motion to seal the minutes. Second. Second by Mrs. Friedman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, that passes six nothing. Thank you. Next up is superintendent's report. Mr. Mitchell. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you can imagine, there uh, is a lot of activity in all of our schools, uh, both uh, in the physical plant uh, in each of our schools, but also uh, on the grounds. In fact, you know, I'm sure that you noticed that the grounds have been um, completed here uh, at the high school. It looks really nice. And several of the other schools have been completed. We um, are confident that everything will be ready for the start of school on Wednesday for students. In fact, most of the work will be done on Monday when new teachers arrive and Tuesday when all teachers arrive. So um, most of the buildings are uh, ready to go. We still have a few that um, need a little bit of work. So for example, uh, there was lots of activity in the high school this year because of the work that was done in the trans building. So they're still working on uh, floors uh, in some of the classrooms and also the, uh, the hallways. Uh, we, McCourt, there was a tremendous amount of activity there uh, this summer with ESY and OCYL. So they are working uh, diligently and getting that school ready. I was there today and, and we're confident that we'll be ready to go um, for next week when the students arrive. I've been hearing lots of positive things about the new custodial hires. Uh, as you know, we were down six custodians. We've hired six really um, good people, and together with the staff that we uh, had in place, I'm hearing a lot of positive compliments from uh, the administrators in, the, in, in their work, so we're really pleased with those hires and the work that they are doing. Um, just, just a couple of other things for your information. As you know, some work is being done, a lot of work is being done um, outside of the school at Garvin. I was there today. Uh, they're making progress and we uh, are confident that the work that's taking place outside, um, most of that is related to the uh, moisture problems that we were having there and um, that work uh, is, is uh, virtually complete. Now it's just excavation, and they're gonna be doing some, um, some seating there, and hopefully that will get done next week as well. The uh, boiler work at both Garvin and BF Norton has started uh, as well. The other thing that we talked about, uh, as you all know, is um, having a, a phone in every classroom in the district. I actually had an opportunity to talk to, per to the Cox communication uh, person who was in charge of all of that work, and I'm pretty sure that they're 
um, done with most of the uh, installation in all of the schools. So it's good news that, in, in my view, and I'm sure you'll all agree, that every classroom in the district will um, have a phone, which is, uh, I think, comforting uh, given the world that we live in right now. So um, still uh, a few things to do, but I believe we're in really good shape, and I'm impressed with the way that the schools uh, look at this time. The other thing that I wanted to um, mention to all of you um, was uh, a meeting that we had today regarding the impact of the construction that, uh, you know, there was some concerns that the work on Diamond Hill Road will impact transportation to and from school. We had a meeting with representatives from the Rhode Island um, Department of Transportation, Durham. Uh, there were three representatives from Durham there. Um, Bob Anderson and George Stansfield uh, from uh, the town hall were there. Bob is the public works uh, director and, and George, as you know, is the chief of staff. Um, and I'm trying to think if anybody else was there. So we, we had a, you know, we had a, a really good meeting and I am happy to report that a schedule has been set so that there will be, other than the actual construction it, itself, that the, um, the work will not take place during the time that we are bringing school, students to school in the morning and at the end of the day. So we, we had a lot of conversation around schedule and we are confident that the work will not interfere with getting students to and from school. So, and as I'm sure everybody knows, this is a project that is gonna take some time. I mean, they're looking at a 2020 um, completion date. But they were, I think, really, um, um, you know, helpful and understand how important it is for us to get the uh, students to school on time and, and safely every day. So that was a really good meeting and we have another one planned for I think it's the third week in September so that we can have a conversation as to how um, everything is, is going, transportation as well as the actual work that's taking place um, on Diamond Hill Road. The only other thing that I would like to mention, and, and you may have some questions, um, the only other thing uh, that I would like to, to mention uh, that is not on the agenda is that there is going to be a blood drive on August 28th, next week. That blood drive is for uh, Cameron Faria. I have uh, been in contact with Cameron's mom on a regular basis, and I actually, um, we actually traded text messages today, and I asked if it was okay if I could share with all of you um, what she shared with me. And that is, first of all, they're really pleased that we're having this uh, blood drive in the trans calf from 2 to 8 on the 28th. But the thing that I really wanted to report to all of you is that um, Cameron is making significant progress. Uh, his parents are, are really pleased with um, what they are seeing in him. And he is uh, in rehab and um, doing doing really well. So I, I think that is comforting for all of us um, to hear. And certainly I was really pleased to hear um, the significant improvement that he has made just in the uh, last week or so uh, since the last time I talked to her. So everybody, uh, please consider giving blood on August 28th from 2 to 8 in the trans cafeteria. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Mitchell? I had a couple things I wanted to say. Um, the the bus schedules and the uh, in Aspen were open on the 17th. So if any anyone hasn't gotten their bus schedule yet or their their school schedule, they can do that. I, I just wanted to thank you for the work uh, that went into it. I know it was not, I'm sure, not easy to get that done on at that time. Uh, but I think um, I appreciate it. But I'm, I'm, I know other parents appreciate it as well. So thank you. Uh, I had a question about the, the bus. Uh, so you, you, you said there's a meeting uh, about bus 
the third week of September. Um, for our next meeting, which I think is the 13th, um, would it be possible to have a report on like when uh, on on late buses, uh, buses arriving to school late? I, I just think I'd like us to get ahead of this rather than behind it. And if you uh, talk to Durham or you, could you ask them to provide an update to you either daily or weekly, however you want to work that out. Mm -hmm. Um, just so we have an idea, because a lot of us were surprised last year when, when, when we heard from parents on Facebook that you know, kids were getting to school so late, and it would be helpful t for all of us to know that beforehand. Okay. Yes, will do. Okay, anything else? Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Next up is report, uh, reports of standing committees. Uh, first up, payment of bills. Mr. DeMonica? Mr. Chairman, there is no payment of bills this time. Mr. DeMonica says there's no payment of bills. Uh, next up is Fiscal Management Subcommittee uh, update. Mr. Chairman, Fiscal did meet tonight. We uh, approved the uh, elementary assistant principal position that was budgeted in this year's budget. Um, we are tabling the CTA agreement. And we did have a talk with uh, Matt Campanelli about the fundraising, about sports in general, and the possibility of the school department trademarking our logo so we can get a handle on this and um, we did talk to the band director about the uniforms what it would cost he gave us a sheet um, of what it would take in order for us to get uniforms storage cleaning some new equipment he would like to see some staff etc so we instructed him to get some more information to the superintendent and the business manager so we can figure out how we're going to fund it and come back at another meeting with a resolution to fund those items. Those items are anywhere from four to six months out once you place the order. So um, we're talking probably next year at best, but um, we do have a really good understanding now of what it's gonna take to do that. And that was our meeting tonight, thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeMonica. Next up is Policy and Procedures Subcommittee Update. Mr. Fiorello? Yes, Policy and Procedures did meet uh, last night, actually. Um, we had a actually we had a very good meeting we met for <laughs> quite some time um, one of the policies we had discussed was the early entry to kindergarten and first grade as well as the affirmative action plan and dispensing of medications during school hours and use of school facilities we will also be dis uh, approving a couple of those policies hopefully later in the agenda we had a good conversation about the foreign language waiver policy that uh, is going to be implemented into the graduation policy uh, at our next meeting, more than likely. Um, that was a very good discussion about, we, will, we are gonna hold on to the requirement for two years of foreign language at the high school for graduation. However, we do see the need that certain students, and I mean very few students, may require a waiver for different reasons. Uh, so we're gonna create a mechanism for that to happen. Um, it will be a, full of students each and every year. So this is not gonna be just an easy way out of kids not having to um, achieve two years of language. Uh, also, we had a very long, thorough discussion about the high school handbook, um, as well as some new policies that we're going to tweak regarding uh, tardies and the attendance policy mostly. Um, also, so what's going to happen is in the next policy meeting, we're going to address some of those situa uh, some of those issues that um, Mr. Carpenter, the dean at CHS and Adolfo Costa brought to the committee. Uh, so this will be an ongoing uh, discussion, which is why we need to uh, push the approval of the handbooks out for a couple of weeks because there's going to be some changes regarding uh, the attendance policy as well as the dispensing of medication. Thank you, Mr. Fiorillo. Uh, next up is Achievement and Communications Subcommittee update. There was no meeting, so there's nothing to report there. Uh, next up is comments from the public. Anyone wish to make a comment can come up to the podium. No pressure? No. Okay, there goes my pen. Uh, next up is public hearing, reading of amended policies. Mr. Fiorillo. Yes. Uh, as I said, we did tweak some policies, uh, the first being the J1 early entry to kindergarten and first grade. That actually was going to require some additional um, changes to the, 
to the draft, so we tabled that for two weeks. Uh, also, so I'll just move on to um, actually. Be, 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 be. The J-12 dispensing of medication policy also was approved, and I would ask that to be read into the record. The G-1 affirmative action was approved, so I'd ask that to be read into the record, as well as K-2, the use of school facilities. Uh, the item B, the reading of the new policy of the foreign language waiver, is not going to be a new policy. As I said, it's just going to be a change to the graduation policy, so there's no reading necessary for that. Thank you, Mr. Fiorello. So you uh, tabled J1 and uh, read into the record J12, G1, K2, and then I-17 is not going to be a policy. Correct. Next up is public comment about these policies. Is there anyone here to speak on these policies? Thanks. Uh, next up is new business. Discussion and or vote to approve employee contract for elementary assistant principal. Mr. Mitchell. Well, Mr. Chairman, just yep. to me first, uh, this was heard upstairs at the fiscal meeting tonight. It is a budget position that we approved when we uh, did the 1819 budget. So, on a three to zero vote, I would move that we approve this, and then the superintendent can do his passage. Sorry, <laughs> I'm new at this now. Um, we, we just voted to approve the uh, employee contract for the elementary assistant principal and the vote was six, nothing. Uh, next up is discussion and a vote to, uh, to approve appointment of, uh, is it another elementary assistant principal? Oh, it's the appointment of the elementary assistant principal. Mr. Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chim. All right, it is, it is my uh, pleasure to recommend Jonathan Rapport for this uh, elementary principal position. Uh, Mr. Damana and I had an opportunity to spend quite a bit of time with uh, John and just some of the things that stand out in um, my mind as a result of uh, our conversation a couple days ago. Um, you know, we, we talk all the time as educators about um, the importance in trying things differently. If what we're doing is not working, we have a responsibility to um, try and improve student performance in a different way. And w one of the things that I enjoyed in our conversation is the fact that, you know, we're usually the ones that bring that up. And John was the one who um, brought that up and, you know, um, you know, so even expressed a little frustration with those individuals who seem to be reluctant to change. So um, I believe that he, as a result of our conversation, understands uh, the need um, for him to be a change agent. There's no question that he sees himself as an instructional leader. We talked about things like, since he's going to be in two different schools, we talked about um, you know, developing a schedule that will meet the needs of both um, BF Norton and community school. We also talked about um, the uniqueness in each of those places and how different they were, which I think was appealing to him as well. I know that both uh, Mrs. LaRiviere um, and Mrs. Vaughn have um, worked together and developed a schedule that will allow John to spend an equal amount of time in both places and over the course of the school year. And one of the things that I was also impressed with is the fact that um, John had clearly done his homework. He talked about our strategic plan and was able to um, provide some pretty detailed information about that. So um, he is, uh, if you saw his uh, um, application packet. He uh, is currently living in North Brantford, Connecticut, but his wife is from, um, I believe, South Kingstown, and um, they're uh, anxious to, to move to Rhode Island. So um, 
it is a, a pleasure for me to recommend Jonathan uh, Rapport for the position of assistant uh, principal at both BF Norton and community elementary schools. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, Mr. Mitchell makes a recommendation. Pleasure of the committee. Motion to approve. Mr. DeModica makes a motion to approve. Second. Second by Mrs. Goggin. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes six nothing. Congratulations. All right. You don't want to put you on the spot, John, but would you like to just come up and say a few words? Uh, so we're putting you on the spot. We don't want to put you on the spot, but we are going to. <laughs> Thank you all. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited to get going in the district. I know I'll make a, like we were saying, I'm going to make a really positive impact when things aren't working. I'm going to be the leader of change. I'm accountable as a person myself, and I expect the same of my staff. And I know I'll do a great job for all of you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the district. Next up is discussion and a vote to rescind teacher non-renewal recommendations. Uh, you have Mrs. Fogel. Good evening. Uh, in executive session, we made a recommendation to rescind two non-renewals uh, of teachers, and so we are asking you to um, approve that recommendation. Mrs. Fogel is asking the committee to approve two uh, rescinding of teacher non-renewal recommendations. Motion to approve. Um, a motion to approve by Mrs. Goggin. Second. Why are we laughing? <laughs> second, second by Mr. Hess and Mrs. Friedman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes 6 nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is discussion and a vote on collective bargaining tentative agreement with the Cumberland Teachers Association. Uh, this was discussed in executive session and no action was taken in executive session. So I think at this point we're looking for a motion to table for our next meeting. Motion to table. Mr. DeMonica makes a motion to table. Second. Second by Mrs. Friedman. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes six nothing. That's tabled till our next meeting. Next up is discussion and a vote to approve first reading of new policy. This is actually not going to be a policy. I-17 foreign language waiver. I don't know if we, what we need to do here. No, no action. Next up, we have a bunch of policies that we amended. The first one is J-1 early entry to kindergarten and first grade. This was tabled at the uh, policy meeting, so no action thing. Next up is J-12, dispensing of medication. Mr. Fiorello. Yes, this, uh, this, this policy came up as a result of having to change, making some changes not only to um, the policy regarding field trips, long duration, short duration, but also some of the ins and outs of cough drops being administered to students. That was a good portion of the conversation, believe it or not. Uh, cough drops are considered medicine and therefore has to, had to have some uh, direction for the staff that has been taken care of in this policy. This policy was worked on by Dr. Santa as well as Donna Marzalkowski, who was the, uh, the head nurse for the district in cons consultation also with uh, Dr. Maureen Karate, our district consulting um, doctor. And this is all puts us in alignment with um, state law um, as well as taking care of some of the concerns that we've had over the last couple of years with um, dispensing of medication, not only at school, but again on field trips. So I would urge passage and I would make a motion to approve the amended policy. Mr. Fiorillo makes a motion to approve the amended policy J-12 dispensing of medication. Second. Second by Mr. Hess. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That passes six nothing. Thank you. Next up is G-1 affirmative action plan. Mr. Fiorillo. Uh, this is just more of a housekeeping issue. Every year we have to just, quite honestly, we change the date on the policy <laughs> and make any change um, to the affirmative action officer for the district, um, which is normally just the superintendent as it is this year. So the only change really is the, um, the date of the certification. So I would just uh, make a motion to pass G1, the affirmative action plan. Mr. Fiorello makes a motion to pass the amended policy G1 affirmative action plan. Pleasure, second by Mrs. Friedman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
That passes 6 nothing. Next up is K2, use of school facilities. Yes, this was also approved as a result of the new contract that we have with our non-certified staff, um, mainly the custodial staff. The policy speaks to the custodial rate the outside organizations will have to pay, so we had to update the policy to reflect the terms of the new contract. That's all the changes. Uh, I would make a motion to approve K-2 use of school facilities. Mr. Fiorello, Mr. Fiorello makes a motion uh, to pass the amended policy K-2 use of school facilities. Second. Second by Mr. Hess and Mrs. Friedman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes six nothing. Thank you. Next up is personnel recommendations. Mrs. Fogel. I know we have a bunch. You're gonna be up here a long time. Okay, so we have been very, very hard at work um, hiring over the last uh, several weeks. And so I wanna thank all of the administrators and teachers and central office staff who have helped uh, bring on what I believe are um, an exceptional group of people. So I'll start with the resignations. We have two. So I request the advice and consent of the school committee on the resignation of Lisa Arone, paraprofessional at Carmelin High School, effective June 30th, 2018, and Melina Kelly, grade three teacher at Garvin Memorial School, effective June 30th, 2018. I'm gonna just keep going. Okay, uh, so now I have the, no, I'm good. I'll just might as well crank it out. Uh, appointment of our current employees. So these are typically pro promotionary. Uh, so I request the advice and consent of the school committee on the following appointments. Diane Arzumanian, District Data Coordinator for the Cumberland School Department with an effective date of August 16th, 2018. Uh, Diane is a Step 10 teacher. This um, position comes with a $7,000 stipend. She was the Reading Specialist at Ashton, and now she is the, the District Data Coordinator. Heidi Lafort, Clerical Assistant Tech at Cumberland High School, effective August 28th, 2018. Heidi was a formerly a paraprofessional with us. Uh, Tanya Rayo, academic coach at Joseph L. McCourt Middle School with an effective date of August 16th, 2018. This position comes with a $3,000 stipend. Ta um, Tanya was a social studies teacher at North Cumberland Middle School and now has made the move to coaching. And lastly, for current employees, Elizabeth Simeo, academic coach at BF Norton Elementary School with an effective date of August 16th, 2018. This position, as I mentioned, comes with a $3,000 stipend and Elizabeth is at least here. So if you want to clap for her, you can clap for her when we're done. I know you didn't approve them yeah, yet. Not but yet. Yeah, I know, you have to wait. I, so. I do have a question about that though. Yes. Are they, uh, is there, do the coaches still teach? No, Okay. so they've been removed from the classroom, but uh, they will be in the classroom in a different capacity, so they'll be teaching teachers. Removed from the classrooms, it's probably. The I know. I probably it, shouldn't have said it that way. They have, they have, they will be in the classroom now as a resource to teachers. Let's let's do it that way instead. All right. So now new employees. So I request the advice and consent of the school committee on the following appointments: Christopher Barboza, World Language Teacher, Spanish at Cumberland High School. All of these are an effective date of August twenty eighth, twenty eighteen. So I'm not going to say that if that's all right. Uh, he is a step four. Amy Barone, EL teacher at Ashton Elementary School. She's a step four. Lauren Bianchi, secondary mathematics teacher at Joseph Elma Court Middle School. This is a one-year position. She's a step three. Brendan Casey, health teacher at North Cumberland Middle School. He's a step eight. Dima, and I'm gonna say her last name wrong, Chamoun, classroom paraprofessional at the Strive program at CHS. That's a uh, change from your, um, what is in the drive, because Rachel just told me about it, so. She's moved from uh, Cumberland Hill to Strive at uh, CHS. Uh, Julie Chilino, secondary mathematics teacher at Cumberland High School. She's a step eight. Alyssa Coleman, building secretary at North Cumberland Middle School, effective August 23rd, 2018. Kristen Cook, classroom paraprofessional in the ICANN classroom at Garvin Memorial. Nicole Cook, clerical assistant tech at North Cumberland Middle School. Brendan Collins, secondary social studies teacher at North Cumberland Middle School. This is a one-year position. He's a step two. Alexis DiGio, yeah, <laughs> I had it in my office. Uh, Di Giacomo, thank you, special education teacher at BF Norton. Uh, she is a step one. Brooke Finder, classroom paraprofessional at Community School. Marissa Gagnon, special education teacher at Community School. She's a step three. Nicole Jeanette, classroom paraprofessional in the success classroom at BF Norton. 
Alexandra Johnson, secondary mathematics teacher at North Carmilla Middle School. She's a step three. Lori Kissick, classroom paraprofessional, success classroom at BF Norton. Alec Alexandra Kraus, elementary educator in the success classroom at BF Norton. She's a step one. Harold Large, classroom paraprofessional, success classroom at BF Norton. Matthew LaRoche, secondary mathematics teacher at Cumberland High School. He's a step seven. Allison Mastin, grade three teacher at Garvin Memorial School. This is a one-year position. She is a step one. Gail Norton, classroom paraprofessional at the success program at BF Norton. Alexandra Scharf, grade one teacher at BF Norton Elementary School. This is a one-year position, and she is a step three. Bridget Siegel, special education teacher at North Cumberland Middle School with an effect, oh, I already showed you that. September 2nd, uh, she's a step two, I'm sorry. Lauren Taylor, one-to-one -one paraprofessional at Cumberland High School. And lastly, Cynthia Walsh, art teacher at Cumberland High School. She's a step one. So there's a few people who are here, I noticed. So Julie Shalino is here, Matthew LaRoche is here, Bridget Siegel is here, uh, Marissa Gagnon is here, and I already told you that Elizabeth's here. I got everyone. So once you approve it, then you can clap for them. <laughs> We can clap again. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't count, so I don't know how many that is. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Fogel made a bunch of personnel recommendations. <laughs> Pleasure of the committee. The chair make a motion we approve. Mr. DeMonica makes a motion to approve. Second. Second by Mrs. Goggin. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes 6 nothing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Can I just, um, I don't know that we have... Um, had to uh, interview this many people, uh, certainly during my tenure. And as you can imagine, each and every one of those um, people that you all just appointed um, had to sit in front of an interviewing team, uh, interviewing committee. And I, I, I just, I think it's important that everyone knows that, that this requires a tremendous amount of work. Um, and um, it, it, it's amazing that we, you know, we've, we've uh, been able to get some outstanding people, but I, I, I can't stress uh, enough how much time and effort it takes to coordinate um, from, from the time a, a person applies for a position on school spring and um, then pulling all of these teams together and every, I, I'm sure these um, folks who were just appointed would agree that, you know, they've had to sit in front of um, quite a few people um, to sell themselves. So I just, I just wanted to state publicly that this has required a lot of work and I appreciate um, Tina's leadership on this and all of the other folks that were involved in this process. Thank you. Agreed, thank you. Next up is school committee comments, school liaison reports. Anyone have anything? <laughs> Mr. Fiorillo? I am very disappointed that Mrs. Sameo will no longer be teaching kindergarten, or first grade rather, first grade, because she is one of the stars of BF Norton. She is still my daughter's favorite uh, teacher she's ever had, but she'll be doing uh, great work, I'm sure, in helping other teachers uh, rise to her level of acumen so also I just want to say it's uh, I'd like to welcome back Brendan Casey back to the district uh, he was a BF Norton he was a PE teacher he went above and beyond for the students at BF and I'm sure he'll uh, do the same in his new position thank you mr. Fiorello mr. DeMonica schools open next week I hope we have a uh, good year and that the buses roll thank you amen anyone else Mr. Mitchell, do we have executive session? No, we do not, Mr. Chairman. Next up is adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Fiorillo makes a motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. Hess. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes 6 nothing. Thank you. We're adjourned at 8.30. Thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs>